What's up, Gear Immortals? Trey Xavier here. On today's edition of Gear Gods Quality Control, we're going to be checking out the brand new Bias FX 2. So I've used Bias FX 1 quite a bit. Let's see what's new in Bias FX 2. Today I'm using my Kiesel TL70. I'm going straight out of my Hosa cable right into my Apollo Twin Quad. First, let's check out the tuner because I have to tune my guitar. And I always like to check out the tuner first because having a good tuner in a plug-in like this is pretty crucial, I think. It's very colorful, it's pink. It turns green when you get the note. Seems to have done the job. So I'm using the Elite version, which has uh, everything, I think, that you could possibly get in Bias FX 2, uh, including a bunch of presets. I'm gonna start with this Big Beard Fuzz. You can imagine the band that they're going for with this one. Let's see if it sounds right. <laughs> That's all I know of that song. Sounds pretty legit to me. Can't say that I've spent that much time listening to ZZ Top, but uh, that sounds about as close as you can get. All right, let's see what else we got here. Obviously, I'm gonna go straight for the metal. Blackened Winter. <laughs> Maybe gonna be like a Van Halen kind of thing. <laughs> Master of Puppies. I can only begin to surmise what this could sound like. <laughs> All right, in the insane category, we have Cowboy from Heaven. These names are not very sneaky, which is good because I want to know what they're meant to be pretty much right off the bat. Not my favorite tone on earth, but it definitely sounds like Dimebag. Let's check out another one here. Let's see. Rose of Sharon. That's got to be a Kill Switch Engage type of sound. I don't actually know any Kill Switch Engage songs, so I'm just going to chug along ignorantly. <laughs> Right out of the box, some really good sounding, usable presets. Those can be tough to come by. So far, I'm most excited about this Rose of Sharon one. That's just, it, it just sounds like Kill Switch. That's not that easy to do in a plug-in, so, so far, so good. So here's what I like to do with presets. Uh, when I find a preset that I like, I like to use it as a template for making other sounds. So like everything in here sounds really good, but I wanna try a couple of the different new amps that they've got in here. So let's try that, just swapping out the amp, not changing anything else. So all we're gonna do is right click and then click replace. And then spread out before us is a veritable buffet of high gain amplifiers. There are 34 of them. We've got a 5153, the tread plate, which of course is a dual rectifier, VH4 from Dietzel, we got uh, just, it just keeps going an Ecstasy, which is probably a Bogner. We've got the Cobra. We've got a Satan version two, which I presume is the Satan, uh, the old England amp. Loomis Metal. I didn't know that Jeff Loomis made amps. They probably just profiled one of his favorite amps or whatever. It kind of looks like an uh, angle, so it could be that. Uh, Marrow Fire. Let's, let's check out the Marrow one. His tones are always uh, so good. <laughs> Brighten it up a little bit. <laughs> Gotta crank up the tone knob on the drive to make it sound a little bit more like marrow tight. <laughs> Pretty 
pretty close. Not bad. <laughs> Four seconds of tweaking, and we have ourselves a very respectable, gentle tone with uh, almost almost no effort at all. Slayer King, I am reasonably certain I can tell you that this is going to be the Carrie King Marshall. <laughs> All right, we got Ola War. War. Huh! What is it good for? Chugging on some riffies. Heavy. All right, let's check out this cab miking situation. Check this out. <laughs> Change it in real time and hear it. This is cool because cabs are a huge, huge part of your sound, a huge portion of what's going to make it stick out or be buried in a mix. And just moving this one basic 57 around on a single speaker is it's night and day. All right, so let's say I've got a sound that I like. Let's just go ahead. I'm going to save it as new. Its name will be Tracticles because it's heavy as balls. Bank one, sure, why not? Great, success. All right, guys, we are going to try the wildest new feature of Bias FX2. It's called Guitar Match. Supposedly, you can sort of model your guitar and then use Guitar Match to make it sound like any other guitar. What? What? All right, well, I, I haven't tried this yet, so I am a little skeptical, but, Excited. Check it out. Guitar Match, the future of guitar emulation technology. Match your guitar to boutique models of real profile in just three steps. They're missing an S there, boys. Step one, create profile of your instrument. Step two, analyze your instrument's output and frequency. Three, select a model to match and enjoy. All right, here we go. Start profiling. A uh, nickname, name your instrument, TL70. Body shape, uh, T-type, sure, why not? Assign pickups. We got a humbucker, we got nothing. We got a humbucker, double humbuckers. Choose a pickup position to begin with. All right, we'll go to the neck pickup to start. Turn the knob to maximum and play some separate notes with your usual attack. Whoa. with my usual attack. Okay, complete. Play a slow arpeggio from sixth to the first string. Oh, okay. Second fret, got it. Fourth fret. It's almost like a video game. Oh, okay, hello. Profiling success on just the neck pickup. All right, let's profile another pickup. Just do it again real quick. All right, to guitar match, onward and upward. So now using the information that the plugin has just gathered from all that weird stuff that I just did, Supposedly, we can pick from any one of these other guitars and it'll sound just like it. Now we have a menu of guitars to choose from. Wow, there's a bunch of them. All right, let's see what we got. We got a 57 gold top reissue. <laughs> SHR Antique, uh, that's gotta be a Sir. 
we got the Gretsch, we got a uh, Wildwood Strat, we got a 52 reissue Telly, uh, ES335, JM Pro, I don't know what that is. Oh, that's a Jazz Master. We got the Randy Rhodes V, we got the John Petrucci, we got a John Mayer, uh, Jazz Master, Strat, Telly, all kinds of stuff. We got a couple different ESPs. All right, well, you know I'm gonna go straight for the John Petrucci, first of all, because I own one, and I know what it sounds like, I think. And uh, let's try it. <laughs> All right, in order to check and see if this is actually working, let's get ourselves a decent John Petrucci style sound. So we're gonna go to the Tone Cloud and we're gonna check out this pedal board feature. These are user submitted sounds and there's probably thousands of them, if not hundreds of thousands. So let's just ser search Petrucci and see if anybody's made a good one. John Petrucci stereo lead. All right, let's hit the play button. Oh, I can just try it. <laughs> not that great, not, not quite the jam. Let's try this other one, John Petrucci Glasgow kiss. Not really. Try this one, John Petrucci solo tone. Actually, that's pretty close. I like this one. All right, let's download it. Just hit the download button, pick a bank. It'll go into bank one, download. Just like that, it appears into my preset list, into my user bank. Give it, give it the old clickerino. Bada bing, bada boom. First I'm gonna try it with the guitar match off and then with it on and we'll see if we can tell. All right, now we turn it back on. That is definitely a little bit more John Petrucci-like. Uh, I, I need to explore a little bit further. Let's check out some other tones that we could possibly get. Is it gonna be able to turn this humbucker guitar into a single coil sound? I find that difficult to believe, but I'm going to try it because that's what I do. For this, let's, let's try a much cleaner sound. This one's called a Strat in London. For the moment, I am going to take all of the effects off, so I'm just going into an amp and a cab. So we can really hear what the guitar sounds like without a bunch of stuff on it. Okay, so it's like a Vox AC30. Is it gonna sound like a Strat? Versus. That is definitely more Strat-like than we started. If nothing else, it sounds really different. So I would say if what you're looking for in the studio is a completely different sound, then this is uh, definitely gonna get you that. Let's try it with a couple other guitars. If this thing can make my guitar sound like a hollow body, I will be very, very impressed and a little bewildered, to be honest. All right, here's my guitar. Here's the Gretsch. That sounds pretty damn cool to me. I can't say that I've ever actually played a Gretsch, so maybe that's bullshit, I don't know. Let's see if we can make it sound like a telly. Not twangy enough. Mm -hmm. 
That, that's pretty sick. Wow, that sounds passably telly-like. Way more twang. I don't know if this will replace an entire arsenal of these guitars, but that's pretty, pretty weirdly accurate, I think, considering that it's just software. Let's try the John Mayer guitar. That one's not exactly night and day, but there's definitely something going on there. All right, let's check out this Les Paul. Let's see if we can find a good slash style preset from the Tone Cloud. All right, this is the most popular entry in the Sweet Child of Mine search category. I should play it in the right key. Not bad, not bad, let's grab it. Here it is, on. It changes the output of the pickup. You can hear it's like much hotter when I have it on. I'm not sure if this sounds exactly like a gold top Les Paul, but it definitely sounds like something. So I don't have a 57 gold top Les Paul here to compare, but something definitely happened when I switched on this button. Uh, the output went up, the tone changed, it had more output. I don't know if they're just upping the input gain to compensate or something, but you can very clearly hear that the output of the pickup is higher when I turn it on. That seems like wizard magic to me. That's crazy and weird, and uh, I wanna know how they do it. Are there little elves in here that are making the sound different? I don't know. All right, let's try this vintage rosewood strat. I think that if you only have one or two guitars, or if you're like me and you don't own any guitars that have single coil pickups, I know, I know, I'm working on it. Uh, this could be an incredible tool in the studio for you to get some drastically different sounds that you don't normally have access to. Like, let's say you need a Strat or a Tele sound on the spot and you don't have access to one or you just need to get it done quick. You could pull this up and give yourself a Tele sound from whatever guitar you're playing inside the box in just a couple minutes. So. I've never experienced anything like this before in software, so that's uh, very impressive to me. I think I'll probably use something like this because, like I said, I don't have any single coil pickup guitars, so if I want that single coil sound, uh, this is like the only option I have aside from borrowing a guitar. So this is probably the craziest new feature in Bias FX2. I really wanted to focus on this because I'd heard about it and it just seemed too bonkers to be true. I think that it's not 100% exactly the same as just using the kind of guitar that there's a picture of, but I don't have all of these guitars, you know? I don't have a Les Paul, I don't, I don't have a Strat and a Tele and an ES335, so if I want those kinds of sounds, this is um, gonna be my only option, and for whatever this costs, like 100 bucks or something, that's definitely a lot cheaper than buying uh, all each of these guitars. I mean, this is this is a fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth of guitars in a plug-in. Maybe they're not a hundred percent exactly the same, but goddamn, is it close? All right, right up here we've got a little infinity symbol. 
Uh, this is the looper. Let's uh, let's try it out. <laughs> Then I can record an overdub. So this is cool because now I can jam on this. So that's an easy way to create some loops that you can jam over or uh, just record a part that you just came up with real quick, a couple different things on top of each other. Then you can hit the export button and export it to your hard drive somewhere and save it for later. Well, as you can see, Bias Effects 2 has been upgraded, improved in many different ways, and uh, I had a total blast playing around with it. This guitar match thing is some next level shit, gonna be real fun for you to play around with and get some, uh, not just different tones from the usual stuff like effects and amps, but more sounds than you'll ever even know what to do with from a collection of guitars that neither you or I can afford to own. So I hope that uh, you got an idea of what Bias FX 2 is all about. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, mash that subscribe button for more reviews and original content, and I'll see you real soon.